Uh, okay. If you take a piece of paper like this and you hold it and you take your knife and you just slide it through there just like that, if you can go slow like that and cut paper, that's pretty darn sharp. Most people go fast and yes, it'll cut paper fast, but I don't have to cut paper fast. I can do it slow. What are you using to do that? Well, I use a, a variety of tools. Here's the little one like that. That's called a poker chip size. Then I have one like this called the long handle. Then we have the newest one, wherever it went. This is called Spark and Sharp. Spark and Sharp is kind of unique because we unscrew the handle and you have the magnesium in the handle. And it does throw a spark. So you have your sharpener, you have your blade, uh, you can actually set at 22 degrees here, all right, and that'll set the blade at 22, then go up or down whether you want it. Sharper would be thinner, and then tough would be above 22. That screws right into the handle. This is the newest, I call it family member. So if you have the whole family, you've got those, that one, and this one. You can either cut the little keychain off, so it's like that, put it in your pocket, or leave it on your keys, or carry this one flat, right down into your pocket. And this isn't just knives, right? No, it's not knives. There's 43 different things that I can sharpen with this. So anything that has a blade, except for lawnmowers, uh, uh, saw blades, and um, drill bits. So all of your serrated edge blades like this, so simply done by making a pivot out of your thumbs and go sideways just like that. Now on this particular one, I'm gonna go right down through there sideways just like that. On this one right here, because they're shallow holes, I'm actually gonna just let it bump along. And I'll slow down so you can actually see just like this, right down through there. And you might wonder, okay, you've done that, is it sharp? You take a piece of paper like this, and if you can cut paper with a bread knife that easy, that knife's incredibly sharp. So what do you think of my goofy looking scissors? You might think those are pruners. There you go, yeah, pheasant and stuff like that. If you can actually make your pruners cut like this, even when they have that much gap, that's pretty good accomplishment. So what you do here is you just slide the handy sharp right up the blade. I use the corners. There's a corner right there, corner right there, 90 degree corners. If that was flat and you grind it 90 degrees, you end up with these two corners. You take the corners, put it on the blade, and brush this way. Then you do this and then flat on that side, and you end up with pruners that think they're scissors. So it brings a new meaning to lifetime tools. That's right, because you know what? If you can actually sharpen this tool, you're gonna use it and use it and use it. In fact, it is five years down the road. See how much of that blade's missing? That blade used to be clear over there. And in five years, sharpening it 100 times a day, two days a week, that's how much I've taken off that blade. So any blade, any configuration, any hardness of blade, all your scissors, your pruners, your hedge trimmers, grass trimmers, side dikes, tin snips, and scissors are this simple. You're going to look at scissors, you're going to find their bevel. Tip the bevel over flat to the table, set that on there like this, and brush out. If that's a little too flexible, set it on the table, and do it this way. Turn it over, make one flat pass, do it again here, one flat pass. Now you're going to end up with scissors that you tuned up yourself that actually cuts like this clear out at the tip. It actually kicks the paper out of the way. That's sharp. <laughs>